Well, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Today we're going to harvest our sweet potatoes and take a look at this bed. I want to talk about sweet potatoes a little bit. All right, we're going to deal with these sweet potatoes. These vines are sprawling all over the place. Uh, sweet potato vines tend to grow uh, and take over an area. Um, there are a couple of ways that people approach the vining mess that you get. Some people have said that if you prune or trim your vines, then your plants will be shocked into putting more resources into the ground. Um, there's a little bit of research that says this is true, um, but it, it's kind of sketchy. And I kind of have said that with these sweet potato vines. Um, but there's really, the, the, what people are trying to, to uh, accomplish there is to prevent the vines from rooting along out in the, you know, where they're sprawling. And here's the thinking, and it's, it's, actually, it's actually true. Uh, rather than cut your vines, what you want to do is come along and make sure that you pull them up so they don't root into the ground. If the vines start rooting into the ground, they're going to start wanting to make little roots down there, and two, you know, the, the sweet potatoes. And it's going to spread the resources that you want in this soil out over all the yard where your sweet potato vines are growing, and you're going to get smaller roots. Um, if you go around and pull up those vines, then you're going to prevent them from rooting out there and wanting to make um, tubers underground. What you want is your tubers right here. You want them to get nice and large. So if you, if, if you can keep the resources of all these leaves, gathering sun, doing photosynthesis, sending resources into the roots here, you'll have larger potatoes. So rather, rather than trim them, um, which you could do, Rather than trim them, it's, it's good practice to go along and pull them up, lift them up, make sure they're not rooting into the ground. Let me show you what that looks like. As these vines grow out into my lawn, if I tug on them, I can feel the nodes that have rooted coming up out of my native soil. And I can tug on that and see it's, it's anchored there. If I pull it up, you can see that this has wanted to root where I don't want it to root. I want it to stay rooted there and produce sweet potatoes there. But these vines are sprawling all over the place and I can feel them tugged, you know, tugging because they're in the, they're in the ground here. So as these grow, come along and lift them up like that, keep them from rooting in the ground and you can just kind of direct them. See, there's some more roots right there. Look at all that. You can direct them where you want them, get them out of the way. But uh, that's, that's the better practice, um, I believe, is to keep these vines from rooting in the ground. But, see, I can, I can feel this going down right there into my yard. Lots of roots. And if you let this happen, sweet potatoes are going to grow in your yard next year. They're going to come up voluntarily. We're going to take all this out. I'm just going to begin pulling these vines. You could cut them back, cut them down. In fact, some of these I will have to cut. Make it easier to find my sweet potatoes down here. Make it easier to find the plants. We just cut them off. This is very loose soil. So we shouldn't have any trouble trying to dig in here for the sweet potatoes. And that's good. You don't, you don't want to dig hard with sweet potatoes. They're a very fragile root. And you can damage them if you just get in here with a fork. So this is a huge mess. I'm trying to throw it over this way. Got vines growing into my neighbor's yard. <laughs> Gonna have sweet potatoes in the ground. All this will go to compost because I'm not going to eat it. All right, as we've pulled the vines up, we brought up some sweet potatoes. This is a purple variety called Murasaki. So we're going to just move these down here. Now, this soil is very loose, and I have discovered that the sweet potatoes are very deep. 
that is a okra stem and root system there so as we dig here we want to make sure we go down deep oftentimes your sweet potatoes will be very near the surface because that's how they tend to grow but this is a potting mix there we go there's a little guy use that to start slips next year I want to bury these and you can feel them in there bring them up gently these little ones will save there's not many in here as I mentioned I think these could go longer it's these roots here that are going to grow your sweet potatoes next year if you leave these in the ground you'll have sweet potatoes coming up volunteer and see this is this is what I don't like to see future sweet potatoes that haven't bulked up yet see I should expect more sweet potatoes than this if I'd have let these grow a little bit longer these roots like this guy right here would have been able to bulk up but I need the bed I need the bed for other purposes I'm getting down to the wood layer down at the bottom here when you find a plant like this generally you're going to find your sweet potatoes pretty close to the, to the stem there and I feel something here but it's not developed when we got here well we got a little guy though there's no sweet potatoes on here this shows you how sweet potatoes grow underground normally this tuber bulking up here should be right up here and they usually put three to five sometimes more sweet potatoes that kind of grow down and angled so when you have your original slip the vine here that's where you're gonna get most of your growth but again I'm not finding what I'm hoping for but you know hey that's okay live and learn plant my sweet potatoes earlier there's one little guy see these are deep they love the soil and they ran deep and began to form their thicker tubers deeper down see how far down that is see how deep that is it shouldn't be like that let's put that down there hello little toad hello there I'm currently reading wind in the willows and I've come to uh, enjoy mr. toad now with these sweet potatoes you don't want to eat them right away you want to cure them in about there's some wood from the bottom with mycorrhizal fungi growing and it's starting to get brittle and break up put that back down on the bottom there what was I saying I forgot oh here's one this is what we're looking for look I've scratched it even with my glove oh yeah you want to cure these so that uh, they get sweet otherwise they're kind of starchy you want to cure them in preferably a humid environment if you can 80 to you know, 80 degrees or so I cure mine in the garage that one's got a chunk taken out of it we might use that for as a seed potato all right I think that's gonna be it pretty bleak harvest for all that greenery huh that's gardening sometimes that's the way it, it goes well that's it not much but it's something I grew this variety this is a Japanese variety it's called Murasaki purple it's got nice white flesh it is probably my favorite sweet potato that I've ever eaten um, at least one of them I wanted to at least grow these enough to get some seed potatoes for next year so I can grow them in earnest and I think these little ones will provide me with slips for next year and we'll go ahead and eat these we'll cure them and uh, yeah well so much for that effort sometimes gardening works sometimes gardening doesn't work and we as gardeners have to be prepared to deal with and react 
to and respond to various challenges that our gardens throw at us. I've learned that I could have done better with this particular crop. I could have, like I showed you, pulled those vines up and caused them to become unrooted from the ground they were sprawling over. And that would have focused more of the energy into these roots that I have down here. That's why they're small. We got some sweet potatoes. They are not very large, but they're certainly edible. And those are a good sweet potato. Just to review, here is the results of what I've been studying about sweet potatoes. If you let your sweet potato vines sprawl over your yard or throughout your garden, wherever the nodes of the vine touch the ground, they are more often than not going to send down roots and try to establish new plants. That's not what we want. If all those roots are growing in the ground, the sweet potato is going to take every ounce of energy that it collects from the sun and converts from the soil, and they're going to try to make roots everywhere. And that's going to result in smaller uh, roots being made across the whole vine patch. What we want is to pull those roots up out of the ground where we don't want them so that the plant will take all that vast foliage and pump all that energy from that big sun-collecting network of leaves into the place where we want roots to grow in our garden. And that will result in a better harvest. Well, I didn't do that this year, and that's why we have such a, a pitiful harvest to show for our efforts this year. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. But you always learn. We're always learning. And what a good opportunity it is for me as a, as a teaching gardener to have something like this happen so that I can share with you how to get, get beyond it, how to respond. So that's that. Well, thank you for joining me today on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Hey, if you like our content, I invite you to subscribe. Hit the bell notification and you'll be informed every time we upload a new video. It's winter gardening season. It's going to be fun to see all our brassicas and our leeks and onions come into maturity. Come along with us. Follow us and we'll show you how to garden in a backyard uh, context like this. I am on zone 9A on the Texas coast. We can garden year round here. So uh, yeah, what a great place to be. Even when we have failures like the sweet potatoes. Happy gardening to you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. <music>